team, the ones who hold on to the dream, unflinching while the bullies pose and fiddle on the hill. Has commerce so reduced the free that blinded like a tot, contaminated by the dog shit in the grass, we blunder slaves to humbug and this Texan dynasty? No. Beyond the grip of trade, the young strain beautiful and proud. The hoarfrost breath of new blood needs but nudges from the old forgotten guard to scale the moral high grounds in the clouds. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. And thank you all for coming here today. And the fight goes on. Roger Waters, everyone. Okay. All right. Let's see. Our next speaker is Roger Warham of the December 12th Movement. So Roger Warham is a founding member of the December 12th Movement, a lifelong community activist, a former political prisoner, and an international human rights attorney. He has presented the United States human rights violations against black people to the United Nations Human Rights Mechanism in Geneva since 1989. Let's give it up for Roger. Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe. U.S. hands off Zimbabwe. Lift the sanctions now. Listen carefully. Three U.S. presidents have said the following. Zimbabwe constitutes an unusual and extraordinary threat to the foreign policy of the United States. They've said that with a straight face and they've used that as a justification to impose sanctions on Zimbabwe. What has Zimbabwe done to deserve that punishment? Zimbabwe, lone and first of all African countries, had the temerity to defy precedent and return the land that was stolen from them by white colonizers to the indigenous people. And that is what is perceived as a threat to the United States foreign policy, which means that the United States foreign policy is a policy of colonialism, neo-colonialism, and white supremacy. So we're here today as a member of the December 12th movement to say very simply and also as a follower of Malcolm X who understood the importance of Pan-Africanism in the, the liberation of African people in the diaspora and on the African continent to say very simply that Zimbabwe will not submit to the strategy of regime change. The United States passed a bill in 2001, co-sponsored by Jesse Helms, and I can see by the gray hairs on people here, they know who Jesse Helms was in terms of an unrepentant cracker. And Hillary Clinton, it was called the Zimbabwe Democracy and Economic Recovery Act, and it imposed sanctions on Zimbabwe until the President of the United States decided that democracy would be restored in Zimbabwe. And since that time, sanctions uh, as, a, as a weapon of war have been imposed on Zimbabwe to make the economy scream in an attempt to get the masses of the people of Zimbabwe to rise up against the government, against ZANU-PF, and return Zimbabwe to actually Rhodesia, very similar to Make America Great Again. So I leave you today with one thought. Lift the sanctions now. Lift the sanctions now. U.S. hands off Zimbabwe. Thank you. All right. 
Okay, next up we have Zaid Mohammed from the People's Organization for Progress and the Malcolm X uh, Commemoration Committee. Right on. All powers of the people, everyone. All powers of the people. I bring you revolutionary greetings from the Soprano State, the state that was one of the defining moles of gangsterism, the toxic dump state, the swamp monster state, the state so racist they couldn't even vote for Abraham Lincoln either time, the state of New Jersey. All right? Don't boo the people, boo the gangsters. Boo the racists, boo the toxic dumpers, boo the monsters, but salute the people. Because I stand in and say that wherever we are, wherever the people are, there is resistance. Wherever we be, there is resistance. We resist any calls for putting troops on the ground in Yemen. We resist any calls for a war against Iran. We resist any sanctions and attacks on Venezuela. We resist and we oppose the continued uh, 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 sanctions on Cuba. We resist war machine wherever we find it, wherever it finds itself. We resist the genocide of the Palestinian people. We resist the continued imprisonment of our political prisoners. Let us not forget Mumi Abu Jamal. Let us not forget uh, 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 Jaleel Mutakim right here, been locked up for 48 years. Let us uh, not forget uh, Ed Poindexter, been locked up for 49 years. Let us not forget Sunni Ala Kohen. Let us not forget those who stood up with by faith and by something else against the war machine here, killing our people in the street. Let us not forget any of that, and wherever we rise, we need to rise together. Solidarity now, solidarity ever, forward ever, backwards never, all power to the people. We'll see you. Some powerful words, huh? All right, continuing on, uh, we have Chairman Omali uh, Yashilta from the... Black is Back Coalition. Yes, O'Malley Yashelta is chairman of the African People's Socialist Party USA and the African Socialist International, the leading force organizing the struggle to unify Africa and African people everywhere. Chairman O'Malley is the founder of the Burning Spear newspaper and the burningspear.com. Let's give it up. Uhuru! I want to greet you with the words, Uhuru, the word Uhuru, it was a slogan demand that was made popular by the Kenyan Land Freedom Army, commonly known as Mau Mau. It was the Kenyan Land Freedom Army that fought the British Empire for scores for tens of years to push the British out of Kenya. And we think it's important because as a slogan, as a demand, Uhuru, Uhuru, the word freedom, terrorized the colonial masters in Kenya and around the world. And so what we do is we use the slogan demand Uhuru because it's extremely important to us and we believe that Uhuru of freedom should be on the minds of African people 24 hours a day. Uhuru! Uhuru! Comrades, brothers and sisters, as it was stated, I am the chair of the Black is Back Coalition for Social Justice, Peace, and Reparations. We are an organization that will, on November 2nd and 3rd in Washington, D.C., be holding a march and a conference against war and for peace but under the slogan, turn imperialist wars into wars against imperialism. <laughs> because we have come to understand some time ago that war is a natural consequence of imperialism. You can't have imperialism without war. 
you have war, whether it's a Kennedy war, whether it's an Obama war, whether it's a Trump war, you're going to have war as long as imperialism exists. And there are some of us who have concluded that while it is good to protest every violation of the peace, every terroristic act that is imposed on the people here and around the world, that our responsibility is greater than that. Our responsibility is to organize and overthrow imperialism to make revolution right here. Our responsibility is to follow the edict of Che Guevara when he looked at the Vietnamese people struggling against U.S. imperialism and he saw that as an example of what the oppressed peoples around the world must do. He didn't say bring the boys home. He said two, three, many Vietnams. The oppressed people have to engage this monster and bring it to its knees. And that's our responsibility in this country more than any place on the planet Earth. We're not going to be able to sing it into a cessation of the action that is making against the people. I want to say that. I also want to say that the Black is Back Coalition, which is the oldest African anti-war organization in this country, held the first demonstration, national demonstration against Obama, had the first national demonstration at the White House when the Obama regime came into office because we knew that imperialism, whatever complexion it comes in, is imperialism. And that Obama is an enemy to the people just like Trump is an enemy to the people. And Obama in so many ways was much more insidious than Trump. Everybody recognizes what Trump is, but Obama used his black skin, the color of the oppressed, to represent the oppressor and that was a traitorous act that he made against oppressed peoples around the world and certainly to African people. So, I think it's also important for us to say that one of the reasons we have to be here today is because we are experiencing a, an imperialism, a social system in a state of crisis. We see perpetual acts of war, not because of the strength of U.S. imperialism, but because of its weakness, it is frantic. And why is it frantic? Because the capitalist system itself was built on a foundation of slavery and colonialism. Black people were first capital. We were commodities and capital. And this is the, this is the real fault line of this social system. The Black is Black Coalition felt like it was necessary to come into existence because many of the wars that have to be fought, have to be fought against, are happening below the radar of the traditional so-called anti-war, so-called peace movement. Because when we look at how the social system came into existence, we're talking about a war that started with the indigenous people in this country who don't even get mentioned unless they're in the room. But it's this country, this land, that was stolen from the indigenous people that became a part of the foundation of the capitalist system that Karl Marx re re referred to as the primitive accumulation of capital that started the entire thing off. We had to come into existence because we want to make war. We want to take on this war that's been made against these people in these concentration camps that are euphemistically referred to as Indian reservations. It's important for us to be here because this imperialism that's in its founding is responsible for my presence here. African people are not indigenous to this land. Somebody came to Africa and initiated a war on Africa 600 years ago in 1415 when the Portuguese came there, attacked Africa, and began to disperse Africans at gunpoint all around the world. It was they who made this assault on the African nation. That's why we have to talk about Sunniata Kohli being locked up in a prison right here in this country. Sunniata was fighting against the imperial war that's been going on for 600 years. 
And we are calling on our comrades everywhere to join in this struggle to defeat that war that has been imposed on us. Their willingness to stop it, stand in front of a tank, to keep it from going to El Salvador, or to keep it from going to Afghanistan, we think that's wonderful. But police cars leave every precinct in New York every damn day to come and murder and brutalize African people. We have to take a stand against that as well. That's what we are talking about. That's what we are talking about. It is a rotten, foul social system that has no redeeming qualities. It doesn't matter who's in office. It has no redeeming quality. It was founded as war against the indigenous people. It was built of death by war on African people who became the labor machine, a part of the so-called primitive accumulation that Karl Marx talked about. Revolution is the way forward. And I know that everybody out here is not ready to talk about revolution, but whether you are or not is coming. It has to come. It has to come. Because the people will never know peace on the planet Earth as long as capitalism, which was born of slavery, which was born of genocide, continues to exist. So I want to say this as a leadership of the Black is Black Coalition and the African People's Socialist Party that African people around the world suffer mightily. And it didn't start here in this country. It started 600 years ago when Portugal attacked us. And African people all over the world today are suffering. We suffer in Haiti. We suffer in Jamaica. We suffer in Houston, Texas. We suffer in Ghana. We suffer in South Africa. We suffer in Sierra Leone. Every place black people are, we are suffering as a consequence of that attack on Africa. And we have come to understand that it's going to take revolution to extricate ourselves from the grip of this incredibly cruel monster. U.S. imperialism is the worst imperialism that's ever existed on the planet Earth and the people will only know free, no peace when we rise up and, and destroy imperialism. Revolution is the only way. We're going to have to be a revolutionary organization to take imperialism off the planet Earth. You destroy imperialism, you destroy Trumpism. You destroy imperialism, you destroy Obamaism. You destroy imperialism, you destroy Macron in France and all the other thieves and pirates who are looting and raiding our people and humiliating black people all around the world. We see our power to the people, black power to the African community. I'm gonna leave you, say Uhuru! Thank you, Black is Back. I think it's time for a little music interlude, so I want to invite filmmaker, activist, and musician Rebel Diaz. Yes. What up, what up? Hey, real quick, I just want to, want to represent, um, I'm coming from Hunts Point in New York, and we are on the front lines of, of the battle against what's going on with this climate change, you know what I'm saying? Like, the, the reality is that we're gonna have climate refugees in the future, and those climate refugees are gonna be the poor, you know what I'm saying? And so when we look at the poor communities, those are the ones that are gonna be facing those realities head on. So I gotta represent my community in the South Bronx, um, and also my indigenous community uh, back home uh, in, in, Mapu, in, in, in Walmapu, the land of the Mapuche. Uh, in the south, I'm, I'm from Chile, but I like to uplift the indigenous movements of the Mapuche, uh, who for years, indigenous communities, since before this was even an issue, been talking about respecting Mother Earth. Um, and, and at the same time, when I talk about the Bronx, can't talk about the Bronx, and I talk about the help that Venezuela gave us, you know what I'm saying, as a, nobody, nobody was even considering showing love to a hip hop community center, and the Bolivarian Revolution did that. So I'm gonna start off my set with a song that we dedicated to him. And shout outs, because I met an embassy protector like five minutes before I got on stage. Um, the brave souls that, that defended that embassy in DC. This goes out for y'all. This is called Work Like Chavez. Drop that real quick. Yeah. 
comandante Hugo Chávez presente, la revolución bolivariana presente. Yeah, put your hands up, y'all. This is a hip hop feeling. We in New York. Here we go. Yeah, look. Yo, yo voy en Caracas, el proceso va para adelante en el South Bronx, el proceso va para adelante en New York, el proceso va para adelante en Chicago, el proceso, look, I can't front, I'm upset that they took our building, next thing el comandante, man, I know they killed them, something going on, I gotta read the signs, something telling me that it's about that time, time to step it up, cause I still smell sulfur, still smell money from this capitalist culture, dedicate verses to my boy Jamil, he out there in Venezuela, front line is real, Hunts Point, New York, 2005, that's when I realized the revolution's so alive, we never had a president come around my, he brought oil to the poor in the winter time, he showed love to the Bronx, that's called solidarity, we show love back, ain't no politicians scaring me, anti-imperialist, till I go delirious, the workers getting serious, they keep fearing us, do the math Mathematics, Hugo Chavez was the baddest. Chick -chick. We gotta work like Chavez. Do the mathematics, Hugo Chavez was the baddest. Chick -chick. We gotta work like you ain't got our guys. El proceso va palante in the South Bronx. El proceso va palante in Maracay. El proceso va palante in Nueva York. El proceso va palante. <laughs> That's a little something real quick. We we gonna be doing half the joints is on here, my brother G1 with me. Um hit that real quick. This, yeah, this next song is a song written by Florence Reese that was organizing with the, with the miners in the Appalachians. So we dedicate this to all the workers and the working class. This is called Which Side Are You On? We put our fists up like this. Let's go. Which side are you on? Yeah. Look. See, I gotta draw the line, I can't take it no more If you ain't down with revolution, what you waiting for? Making money for suckers in our communities poor Ripping flags off of coffers, man, this ain't our war Colonized and terrorized by the world's biggest killers The U.S. government, the biggest weapon and drug dealers Doing prisons with children, incarcerating the future My space is Facebook, got a stuck in computers Sickle stupid, bumping music, got some music to the shorties The dances that they spitting, we just listen and absorb it I've been dormant, I've been woke and I'm a giant, I'm ready With the apple in Oaxaca and we hold it I rock hard like Palestinian children holding slingshots With every single kid that's down for hip hop The culture, the life, what it really stands for This music is resistance, it's the voice of the poor on the side of the workers, the teachers, and lunch ladies. On the streets of brown mommies raising our brown babies. I'm with youth organized, cleaning up the Bronx River. Cat men scale out there when I stand and deliver. I'm with Evo Morales, man, he running Bolivia. Distribution of the land so we can all live bigger. I'm with Ugo and Fidel, Grandmaster of Mally Mel. With the Panthers up in Queens, justice for Sean Bell. We got Macho Negro, we don't care that Rios. We don't for Oscar Lopez, time to get in the bill. We don't boo Jamal, we don't sign a Shakur. With the gumpers in the fuck out of here and the penny more. Which side? Shy City. The South Bronx, baby. We're Bushwick. Con todo Queens. Con las mujeres. Con Nueva York, baby. Look. Look. Now I'm for telling the truth, exposing the lies Think about the dead soldiers when you're driving your ride When people die for the oil, daddy bushes revenge I'm with the widow, the children, and the lonely best friends For families, staying together as one I'm not for the raids or the deportation We keep the total and the MIR So watch out for the snitches in the unmarked car And for Neil Solito, we gon' fight for your moms So we gon' shout her out twice in one song For 12 million workers in El Vida Ariano For a world without borders and a better tomorrow Better tomorrow That's one Yeah, so look, when we talk about climate, I'm over here talking about climate refugees like it's something of the future. We got that right now with folks from the Bahamas. You know what I'm saying? You, you look at Puerto Rico, what's going on with that? So we did a little remix. It's called Viva Puerto Rico Libre. And it's a remix that we did from a crew out of my area in the South Bronx called the Ghetto Brothers. You know what I'm saying? So this is a remix of that Ghetto Brothers song. And it's called Viva Puerto Rico Libre. Drop that real quick. Turn it up, turn it up. Yeah. 
para todos los que están allá, estamos acá apoyando. Se me sale de abril de Puerto Rico. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. Yellow Benji right here. Yes, Y'all can sing along. It goes, Viva Puerto Rico Libre right here. Viva Puerto Rico Libre. We don't get free. Let's go, y'all. Let's get in my G. We don't get free. Día de lucha, pero estoy cansado. Hasta cuando aceptamos vivir como esclavo. No quiero vivir comiendo miga. No quiero llorar por nuestra vida. Si no luchamos, no sobrevivimos. If we don't struggle, we die in my people. Hasta cuando compañeros vamos a decir, siento. No te olvides la tortura al infierno. Yo no quiero colonización. Solo quiero liberación. Don Pedro al piso lo dijo mejor. No importa ser fuerte si no hay valor. We must be brave, united hermanos. South Bronx to the north of Chicago. Bad luck to the Isla del Encanto. Ghetto brothers, take it out with the canto. We don't get free. Viva Puerto Rico libre. Let's get it, my G. It's time to get free. We gon' get free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what's up. Um. So look, I gotta share something. I feel like I'm, I'm with the fam because we're here. So on the way over here, they was talking about, you know, some of the points of what this gathering is about. And he was talking about nuclear weapons. And we gotta be clear, because folks got a short memory. The only country that's ever used nuclear weapons is this country right here. They dropped on, on Nagasaki and Hiroshima. And if you look at it from the, from the perspective of history, that shit might as well have been yesterday. You know what I'm saying? And so, it's not a song, it's not done, but I feel like it's cool, we should share it. The, the, the idea goes, we in the streets trying to hustle out the peace, but the government don't want to put the bombs away. Nobody's organizing, that's why the youth are dying, all they gotta do is put the bombs away. We in the streets trying to hustle for this peace, but the government don't want to throw the bombs away. Nobody's organizing, that's why the youth are dying, all they gotta do is put those bombs away. I'm not a singer, so most likely you know what I guess, but we gon' we gonna do that. Let's drop that beat and see what it sounds like. Yo, we in the streets trying to hustle out the peace, but the government don't want to put the bombs away. Nobody's organizing, that's why the youth are dying, all we gotta do is throw the bombs away. We in the streets trying to hustle out the peace, but the government don't want to put the... Yo, shots go off the neighborhood. Police got a young man dangerous. They banging us, we banging back. They bang inside of us, fight back. We don't want war, we want freedom. No excuses, what's your reason? Not your ghetto, not your slave. Uh uh, not today. We in the streets trying to hustle out the peace. But the government don't want to put the bombs away. Nobody's organizing, that's why the youth are dying. All we gotta do is put the. Hey, we in the streets trying to fight for this peace, but the government don't want to put the bombs away. Yeah, nobody's organizing, that's why we multiplying, all they gotta do is throw the bombs right, cut that, cut that, that. That's a little idea, I'm gonna, I'm gonna write that and record it, and when I put it out, it's gonna be for y'all. Alright, I'm gonna do one more and I'm out, one more and I'm out. I believe that hip hop is, is a culture, I'm done. I'm done, thank you. Sarah, I love you, I'm done. Check us out, rebelds.com, we're here. And hey, I want to share something before I get out. It's, it's, it, when we hear, we gather, we may be small in numbers, but I'd rather rock with 200 soldiers than a thousand knuckleheads who don't know what time it is. And I've been hearing some righteous politics on the stage. You know what I'm saying? It's not no liberalism. We, if we really gonna win, we have to see the fact that we are already at war. You know what I'm saying? And if you're gonna fight, when you live historic moments of oppression, the only response is historic moments of resistance. All right, peace of mind. Thank you for that performance, Rebel Diaz, and thank you for, for supplying the Embassy Protection Collective with our soundtrack when we were on the inside.
Right, Kay? You know that's right. Next up, I'm going to introduce someone that I work very closely with at the Gray Zone Project. He's the senior editor of the Gray Zone Project, Max Blumenthal. Thank you, and, uh, and, uh, and something else. Are you ready to march? Yeah. All right, I was just gonna thank the organizers for making me go after Rebel Diaz. It's like a pretty hard act to follow. I'm not gonna spit any rhymes, I'm just a journalist. Uh, yeah, but yeah, well, I'll, I'll do my best, you know. I am not objective, and neither are the journalists up in the Reuters Thompson building, at the Time Warner building, at the 30 Rock MSN, MSDNC building. They're not objective either. They just, you know, they have their little blue check marks on Twitter and their suits, but really you could just basically automate them with a automatic Wall Street and War Machine generation reporter bot. We wanna do something different at the Gray Zone Project. At the Gray Zone, what we're trying to do is counter one of the most sophisticated and vicious information wars being waged against the minds of the Western public to cultivate support for destructive regime change wars that destroy any independent state. And what we have done is go to the ground in these countries that have been targeted for regime change and show another side and show the people who are demonized and who are lumped in in a racist way with the official enemy dictator. So we've been this year to Nicaragua, we've been to Venezuela, we've been to, we just returned from Syria and I'm tired as hell as you can tell. And we were also in Honduras, a country where a US regime change operation succeeded. Let me talk about these countries a little bit and and she says, don't go too long. We're gonna march. But let me talk about these countries a little bit and tie it in to the climate issue. Um, you know, we're quality, not quantity here. This is like the anti-war movement. This is the woke people who've been red-pilled. You had like 250,000 people yesterday, no mention of militarism or regime change and the role that it has played in the destroying the environment. So we have to educate them. There were three countries that did not sign on to the Paris Protocol. China, you know, somebody might call them petro-populists or something. They are trying to build an economy basically from scratch and lift millions of people out of poverty into the middle class. So they didn't sign on to it. Then there's Nicaragua and Syria. Why didn't they sign on? Nicaragua and Syria, you look, look, look up, you know, any report on this and you'll see, you know, Terry, Gro and you'll see NPR. You know, the, the evil dictator countries did not sign on to the Paris Protocol. Nicaragua didn't sign on because Nicaragua faces the direct brunt of climate change with hurricanes every year and they considered it a band-aid solution that was too weak and the elected Sandinista government led by Daniel Ortega is putting in place some of the most advanced mechanisms for preparing their country and their population with food sovereignty with shelter for the effects of climate change and so they didn't sign on then there's syria syria didn't sign on why because our government spent billions of dollars to arm and train 31 flavors of takfiri wahhabi contras to devastate that country and we saw what they did and talked to people who lived under their rule and they were promoted to us as moderate rebels, as freedom fighters. Syria could not implement the Paris Protocols because the state was under direct attack. So this is the issue. If you don't have independent states, states get taken over. Nicaragua, a year later, faced a regime change attempt and some of our lefty friends supported it. I don't understand why. They supported the overthrow of the Sandinista government with an opposition funded by big agro like Cargill. The Sandinistas and Nicaraguan people resisted and they're continuing on their path to, to independence and environmental sustainability that goes well beyond what the EU and the US are willing to do. And can we not forget about Brazil where we saw another regime change operation where Lula, Da Silva is now in prison for a phony corruption scandal and Dilma Rousseff was ousted in a parliamentary coup and as a result 
Under the watch of Yair Bolsonaro, a far-right proto-fascist, the Amazon, burned like it had never burned before. And I don't know what Extinction Rebellion was doing protesting the Bolivian embassy. They should have st stuck to the Brazilian embassy. Uh, you know, get your head right. Um, we went to Honduras too, and I'm gonna wrap up here. Because Honduras, is, it's so important that we know what's happening in that country, where a coup took out its democratically elected leader, Manuel Zelaya, in 2009, presided over by Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton, and installed a right-wing junta, now led by someone who is accused in a New York federal court of narco-trafficking, Juan Orlando Hernandez, who still, despite bringing bags of cocaine marked with his brother Tony's um, initials into the U.S., gets to come and visit Washington and meet with the Department of Homeland Security. Honduras has seen some of the worst attacks on environmental defenders, and many of you know the name Berta Caceres. We were able to go to the home that Berta Caceres was raised. We've just posted an interview that Anya conducted with Berta's mother. They are living under 24-hour police guard paid for by human rights groups. They travel around in armored cars. There are cameras around their house. They are under threat. Berta is a from the Lenca indigenous group and defended her river and her land and went around the world denouncing not just climate change and making these empty calls to save the planet, de denouncing the effect of capitalism and regime change and the policies advanced by Hillary Clinton on her country. And she was cut down, killed in 2016 by a death squad, hired by a multinational corporation, building a hydroelectric dam in her community. A hydroelectric dam that would have never been, been possible without this regime change operation. So it's our responsibility as people who care about this planet and the people in the planet and who care about man-made disasters like the famine in Yemen caused by our government and Saudi Arabia, our, our woke ally, Mohammed bin Salman. It's our obligation to stand against regime change wars, phony color revolutions, and the corporate media's information war that they're waging on our minds. We have to be the teachers. We have to tell people how this is connected to the destruction of the planet. Thank you. Thank you, Max. It is our responsibility as citizens in the United States, the preeminent empire, to show solidarity with the people that are being targeted by our government, by regime change wars, economic warfare, and say that we believe in international law and the UN Charter. That's exactly what we're going to do in a few minutes when we walk. We march together to the UN. I hope everybody's ready for that. But first, I just want to introduce our final speakers, David Paul and Adrian Pine of the Embassy Protection Collective. Come on up. Hello. Um, I consider myself a concerned uh, citizen. I flew out here from California to, to uh, visit the embassy. And part, mostly because I've been disgusted for most of my life watching the United States say they're trying to promote democracy around the world and they're doing just the opposite. Regime change using violence, propaganda, militarism um, to overthrow governments and stop any efforts of self-determination in other countries. And in our experience in the embassy, they call us criminals. The real criminals are in the State Department, the White House, a lot of these buildings around us who are trying to basically, their goal is to use whatever measures they can to steal the resources of other countries, to feed the greed of the corrupt elite, the capitalist elite, that basically run this country and I um, I'm also concerned about the war on our rights and democracy in this country and the those same people use various methods of racism to divide us they use legal bribery to buy the politicians they um, voter suppression to keep people's voices silent and use the media I mean, this is not all news to you, but 
use the media to silent vo silence voices, and instead of real news, we see practically 24 hours of celebrity gossip and a deep analysis of the uh, tweets of a psychopath. So my time in the embassy was very inspiring to me. The, the unity and the collective consciousness that I saw among our group is something I feel um, it exists in, with other groups, but I feel we really have to think of building ties and realizing how much all of our issues are connected. And it's so important to build coalition and maintain in coalition with other groups if we're gonna turn this around and reach people that are beyond just our circle of friends. I'm not saying we're doing that today, but I, I know it can be tiring to walk around empty buildings yelling slogans at each other. We wanna do more than that. And if we work together and use our numbers, the strength of our numbers, um, we'll be able to do that. Um, and, Adrian? Oh, what's that thing? So, uh, and we should not be intimidated. We need to keep up the fight and do it together. That's how we're gonna be successful. Thank you, David. My name is Adrian Pine. I am a university professor. I talk for a living and I know it is time to shut up. Um, there's nothing I could say here that hasn't been said better already. Uh, so I just want to uh, first ask any of the embassy protectors who want to join us here up on stage to come up right quickly. Um, it's okay. Uh, ben, whoever is out there and wants to join us on stage. Juliana, get up. Martha, is there a step up? There's a step on the other side if you want to go up there. Julia! <laughs> all right. Okay, I was charged with hurting everybody up here, but I'm not sure what I'm supposed to say. I'm going to hand it off to Anya. No, I've spoken enough today. Let's see. Somebody... Any, I feel like, uh, let's hear from a protector who we haven't heard from yet today. Or no, or Margaret. She knows <laughs> so I know what to say, apparently. <laughs> what I want to say is that we so appreciate every single one of you who came out today. We so appreciate all of the Embassy Protection Collective members, all the Embassy Protectors, because there were so many. There were protectors on the inside of the Embassy. There were protectors on the outside of the Embassy. There were protectors who were watching what was happening and sharing the news and letting people know. And all of us, all of us were key to the success of the Embassy Defense. And it continues because the Trump, I'm going to call it the Trump regime, right? They're not giving up. They're, they're building terrorist camps along the Venezuelan border in Colombia. They're practicing trying to get paramilitaries into Venezuela to destroy the infrastructure to massacre innocent people. And so our work continues. The economic war against Venezuela continues and we have to demand no more regime change, no more military aggression, no more unilateral coercive measures. They're not sanctions, it's economic war. And so we say no to that. We say yes to obeying international law, respecting the sovereignty of nations, and resolving our conflicts in a way that intelligent beings can do, not through a violence, but through dialogue and negotiation. And so we're gonna wrap it up. We want to thank all of the Embassy Protectors for being here today and everyone, we're going to march. Are you all ready to march? Yeah. We're going to march to the United Nations to let the United Nations know, surprise, the United States is not above the law. The United States has to obey the law too and as people who live in the, in the current largest empire in the world, the most rogue state, the most violator of law, it is our responsibility to tell the United Nations that they have to do their job. I was going to cuss, but I don't think I should do that. <laughs> oh, I don't know. We never heard a cuss word. They need to do their job and hold the United States accountable to the United Nations.
Nations Charter, which says everything we're doing is illegal. So let's take the energy, let's take the knowledge that we have today, and let's take it to the streets and march down to the United Nations. So